How are you guys? Welcome back to Wargaming China. And today we're going to be talking about the Wusong Forts, General Tang's disobedience, General Deng's cowardice, the failed attempts by the Japanese to take the Wusong Forts, and the landings of the 24th of the Japanese 24th Independent Mixed Brigade on the 7th of February 1932. Now, as we've seen in my um, previous videos, presentations on this, this is a conflict that Chang, although he wants to, it to happen, because as I've said previously, he's running to be the generalissimo of the country, he doesn't want this to expand into a wider war and Japan at the same time is very ardent that the forces she is fighting are warlord troops and that is what and when General Kang announces that he's a announced that he was a National Revolutionary Army regular officer this was rejected by the Japanese but at the, so this is the so the bizarre situation happens that in um, the fighting of Shanghai in 1932 we will see the Chinese Air Force in the sky fighting the Japanese uh, a Chinese army fighting I said hey not the a Chinese army fighting the Japanese around Shanghai and the Chinese Navy going on about life unmolested in Shanghai itself because it didn't take part in the battle it observed strict neutrality now why is this? because the standing order of the National Revolutionary Army indeed the standing forces of all the standing orders of all forces that are considered to be the Chinese Army or could be considered to be the Chinese Army have a standing order of non-provocation with the Japanese. That's a standing order of non-provocation. And this is a standing order that will continue for many years to come. So, today it is the 3rd of February. It's morning, about 6.30 in the morning. There's a little bit of mist. And it finds three Japanese destroyers of a, fl of a small flotilla. These are my soccer tastes, so they'll just stand in as Japanese destroyers. Waiting for the high tide to come in so they can cross the sandbanks and enter the Wampal River. Now, General Tang and General Deng have been watching and are fully aware that, uh, that the fighting has, is raging in Jiabe and Hankyu. They know because they've seen the ships arrived and they've seen the uh, Japanese air aeroplanes in the sky that Jiabe is flattened. The Japanese are bombing indiscriminately. They have total their superiority and they are leveling this, most of the city outside of the international settlement. However, the men of um, the Wusong Fortress are also very well aware that General Kang's 19th Army is not only holding its ground, but around Jiabe, it's counter-attacking. Now, on the morning of 29th, fighting was still raging in Hankyu and Jiabe. This fighting would peter out come nightfall, but it wasn't all good news for the Chinese that day. They did lose one armoured train around the south station, reducing the number of armoured trains in action now to, th to two. From the original three Chang had sent. 
they've seen um, that the Japanese are not bringing their aircraft below 1500 feet and they also are acutely aware that the Japanese are basically massacring any civilians in these areas that are unlucky enough to fall into their hands. Indeed, by the 3rd of February, the International Settlement, the Americans and the British and the French among the International Settlement are pressing the Japanese Navy to release prisoners, civilian prisoners to them because they can't stand the sight of what the Japanese are doing on the streets of Java and Hankyu. Um, this is good though, because at the beginning of this conflict, the European powers and the US powers, well, the European powers more, were probably more sympathetic to Japan. But because of Japan's actions in front of them, that, um, that's quickly changing. So we come to the morning of the 3rd of February and the Japanese destroyer flotilla is awaiting the tide, the coming in of the tide to cross the Seine Banks to enter the Hompo River. Now, General Tang in charge of the guns and General Peng in charge of the defense of the fortress itself are uh, both, have both obeyed these orders every day. But on this morning, General Tang decides to tell his gunners to open fire. Now, what follows is a series of events that are still hotly disputed today, and what I am going to give you is my understanding of them. The commander of this Japanese flotilla, whose ships are stationary in a light mist, waiting for the tide to come in, return fire. Now, they return fire with armor piercing shells at a flat trajectory, and within the ranges we know is, is well within 3,000 meters. However, two things affect both sides. Sorry, one, both sides shooting is affected by a number of factors. The first factor is for the Japanese destroyers. They are shooting on a flat trajectory, high explosive armor piercing ammunition. And just as we found with, with high explosive armor, Navy high explosive armor piercing ammunition on the 28th and 29th of January, at Tiantayan Station, if the ground is soft, the shells fail to explode. And this is Shanghai. The soil is very soft, very fine silt. The Wusong forts are built up. The Wusong forts are a built up fortification of earth, and they've been um, added to and altered for centuries. There's always been guns at Wusong. Now, what guns were in action that day, we don't know. Historians differ. But if we take a look at what guns China had bought, and for this, I'm going to, um, this book, Kang Zhan, excellent book. And this is um, the book from which I'm going to get the information on the coast artillery, the coastal artillery, which I'm going to tell you about now. Um, but also at this point, I would like to, uh, to give a big shout out to my new friend, Alexander Wang, who gave me much more detailed information about the guns and their history. Indeed, a um, chart of the sandbanks and an article that he sent me and he helped me a lot with this game. So, when we look here at Changsha, the, the distance between the Wusong guns and Chang Wa Pang Beach 
is five kilometers. So as a war game, and as the terrain itself, if you know this territory, I've, I've compressed it a lot for this game. And I'm going to, in this game, I'm going to crush a series of events into one scenario. So I'm going to go back to the morning of the 3rd of February now. Now, the Japanese return fire. The Chinese open fire, the Japanese return fire. Now, some sources state that the Japanese man boats and assault the fortress straight away. Now, if we're looking at three Jap destroyers, we can say that they could muster between them 100 Blue Jackets, not more than 100 Blue Jackets. Um, this is the difference between the Japanese Navy and the Royal Navy or the US Navy. US Navy and the Royal Navy, you would not find Marines on a destroyer. But in the Japanese Navy, it's, they are Blue Jackets and they are part of the crew. So the crew that on the destroyers that are trained as infantry, mount rowboats and start rowing towards the fortress to assault it. Now, this assault fails miserably. In fact, it fails so miserably that the Japanese, it's very hard to find a reference to it in Japanese sources. However, having said that, on the afternoon of the 3rd, the Japanese notified the, international, the, the foreign delegation of the International Settlement, the ruling body, that they ha were now going to assault the Wusong forts. Okay, so preparatory to that, probably within two hours of opening up on these Jap destroyers, the first air raids are put into Wusong, into the Wusong forts. Now, after the first air raid, after the morning of this destroyer fire, of the dueling guns with the destroyers, and then a series of air raids, General Tet Deng, the commander in forces the ex the commander in charge of the actual defences of Wu Song, abandons his post. But his men stay true, stay loyal, stay at their posts, and endure the Japanese bombardment. General Tang is put in charge of uh, in total charge of the fort and the resistance at the fort continues. Now, on the 4th, the Japanese again attack the Wusong forts with an amphibious assault from the Japanese Navy. Now, we do know that in total, in the Wampo, plus the five destroyers that come in, there's 39 vessels. Um, cruisers, heavy cruisers, destroyers, minesweepers, gunboats, seaplane tenders, aircraft carriers, and the aircraft carriers support vessels, because aircraft carriers never go anywhere alone. So that is a hell of a choice that the Japanese have got to pick a assault force from to hit, to, to land, to assault and capture the Wusong guns. So on the 4th, again, we're going to pretend that my Sokotes are um, Jap destroyers and cruisers. Japanese Navy attempts an amphibious assault on the Wusong Fortress. Now, the actual assault on the fortress would have, take, would have um, occurred further up because there's a sand bank at this point. But as I sort of compressed everything here, and my game. We'll see what my scenario is, I'll reveal it. So, through a, cord, cord, through a lack of coordination and a total lack of reconnaissance, 
this second attempt by the Japanese Navy to take the Wusong fort will fail. So, in these days of bombardment that will follow, General Tang, which will carve himself out a legend. These guns, these, these guns will fire in, intermittently throughout the battle. Now, what are the guns of the Wusong forts? Well, some of the guns of the Wusong forts would look at home in the Union lines at the Siege of Vicksburg in the American Civil War. There are 300 millimeter Armstrong Whitworth guns. There are 240 millimeter Armstrong Whitworth guns. There are 120 millimeter Armstrong Whitworth guns and 200 and 150 centi 50 millimeter Armstrong Whitworth guns. There are Vickers Armstrong 150 millimeter guns and to be honest any gun that was thought of as coastal artillery that might have been produced between 1880 and 1900 probably found you could probably find one or two of them somewhere along either the Wusong forts or the Tapu forts further up the Yangtze. Now the Wusong forts guard the mouth of the Wampo River for the entrance to Shanghai. What would follow for the men of General Tang's command can only be put as an ordeal. Every time the Japanese believe themselves that they have silenced the Wusong guns, the guns bark again. This is a testament to two things. The tenacity of the gunners, but also um, the um, the strength of the fortifications themselves. Now, even when guns are um, knocked out, the Japanese will be hitting the same guns again and again and again because in their air raids, as I said, they're not dropping below 50, 1,500 feet. It's very hard to them just distinguish which guns are manned and which aren't. And to be honest, the Chinese are only wearing those guns when they're going to get a shot off. So it's all conjecture as to which guns were um, in action. But we know that they're all heavy guns. Uh, the Vickers, 150mm gun, fires a 45 kilo shell projectile to a range of 8,900 yards which is about eight eight kilometers so with this beach with this beach being um five kilometers from the guns it was well within range so the japanese second japanese amphibious assault on the wusong guns on the 4th of february fails Now, for the next three days, the Wu Song guns will be put under merciless bombardment by Japanese air, by air assets of the Japanese Navy, and by vessels of the Japanese Navy. Um, as I said, we know that many of these shells fail to explode and indeed there are some lovely pictures available online of shells that have been dug up over the years and deposited in a pile. So by the 7th of February, by the 6th of February the Japanese army is on its way to Shanghai. Although units of the Japanese army will be will will dock in Shanghai itself, 
that cannot be considered a um, an amphibious assault because they are already they don't have to fight for those docks. Those docks are in the, are in the Japanese part of the international settlement, so they're just landing the ships and undocking the troops. This is the first amphibious assault by the army. Now, as I've mentioned previously in other videos, the Japanese army had a lot of experience and a lot of competence when it came to um, amphibious warfare. <clears throat> If you look at these islands here, there were also guns on this side of the river, but I have never ever been able to find any suggestion that they fired a shot. Now, the 24th, the Mixed Independent Brigade is something that is not uncommon in the Japanese army. Um, for a guy to the Japanese Army, I suggest uh, the US Army Handbook for the Japanese Army, although I must stress that book only takes World, World War II from you know, 1939 onwards, 1941 onwards, and um, it is an interpretation of, Je of American intelligence reports. And although it's a very good source for the Japanese Army, it's no good for this Japanese army because it's 1932 here, but also um, there have been more amendments and more re relative, relevant and more recent publications that have shed more, much more light on it. But if you do, have, if you are fortunate to have that book, it's a good book. Now, as I've said, the Japanese believe that they have silenced the main guns that can guarantee the army no interference from any from the Wusong ports for its assault on Chang Wa Pang on the 7th of February. Now, basic differences between a um, 1932 Japanese but we'll talk battalion level is um, uh, sorry, regimental level is, is four battalions to the regiment and uh, four regiments to a division. The mixed brigade is quite common in the Japanese army. It's where you get uh, four infantry battalions from any source you want and then you add your um, artillery, anti-aircraft, engineering and reconnaissance assets. Now, the mixed brigade was a competent formation, but you must remember the Japanese army hasn't seen that much combat in years, and these troops are fresh from Japan. Um, basically, it's the same organization as a World War II Japanese formation. You don't want any name orders, and you want to ensure that your LMGs are the Type 11, the hopper mounted clip magazine fed in 6.5 millimeter Genko, not its own propriety ammunition. So, this assault, the object of which is to land, seize, seize, seize the beach, drive in land, cross the Wusong Creek at a, bri at a, at a bridge further over here. I've, as I said, I've crossed all this um, and assault and cross the Wusong River. Now, that's a big task for a brigade, but usually a Japanese, even a well equipped Chinese infantry division, couldn't cope with a well equipped Japanese infantry regiment. So it's not such a big ask for a brigade. Now, the Chinese response to this is, as I said again, it's contradictory. Some, some authors say, that this section of Chang Jia Chang of Jian, Chang Ba Pang was held only by militia. Others say that um, the General Kai had anticipated this and had put a screen of forces here from the 78th Division 
whose job it was to slow the Japanese down long enough for the bridge to be demolished and den thus denying the Japanese access to the Wusong Fortress. Now, in any way we, we, we look at this, this brigade landing here is a very good strategic move on the part of the Japanese. There's not many bridges. The Chinese, it's very rare in the um, War of Resistance for the Chinese to destroy their own bridges. It's very rare. So for, the, for, for General Ken to uh, tear this bridge down, it wasn't blown up, it was torn down. It takes time. Um, it, this was a serious defensive move. It was something I think the Japanese didn't expect. I think they just thought they were going to land here advance past Kian Wang and outflank the defences along the Tiantang rail line. But General Kang and the 19th Army were going to make sure that didn't happen. So this screening force will delay the Japanese as long as it can, retreat back to the lines of Kian Wang, and now there will be the Japanese, the Chinese lines will then form an L shape up until the Busan Creek with then the fortress and the troops guarding it being supported by further elements of General Kai's 19th Army. Now, this Japanese landing though will precipitate Chang intervening. And how he will intervene is he will send the best army China has, General Zhang Zhong's 5th Army the so-called Germanized divisions. But remember, this is 1932, and the Germanized divisions of 1932 are a lot different to the Germanized divisions of 1937. So, discuss the guns of the fort, discuss the general title. So, my game here, my scenario is to just do the Chang Wapang landings, with some of the guns in action, with bombardment from the Japanese. I'm combining all the elements into one game, but I'm not going to assault the forts for this game. Um, basically, I'm not going to do that because I didn't think I could do a enough, good enough job of the forts. You know, they're, they're, they're massive, and um, a lot would be a good game. Um, You know, I've only got one War Games table. I can only do this um, this series of presentations, platform all these ideas on the first battle of Shanghai in a certain way. And this was the way that I thought would be, you know, m the most fun for me. And just and you know, and also have to do the least amount of work for. It. Now on the roof there, got a twenty millimeter auto cannon. Got the Chinese commander there. Um, these landing craft, these jet landing craft, are uh, not not the right landing craft. Um, they're from, I think, Mark's Toy Company makes them, so they're just generic landing craft. However, that won't affect the dice roll. So, we're going to look, next time I hope to look more at the fighting on the Wusong Creek. And um, the reinforcement by the, by the 5th Army. So as I said, it's the 7th of February, the Japanese are landing at Chen Hua Pang. Elements of the 19th Army are delaying them while the bridge across the Wusong is being torn down. Okay, thanks for your time. Um, if you did like that, please press and subscribe. Press like and subscribe. Um, always remember the Chinese soldier fought with the least, for the longest. Take care. Bye-bye.